Shalom, shalom to all the brothers and sisters and all the tribes of Israel. I was on this beautiful, blessed day, this Shabbat day, this day of Shavuot, on uh, this day of Pentecost, a day where we have reached 50. Um, we've had our seven weeks, our seven Sabbaths. We've had our 49 days of harvesting and laboring, and now here we are, gathered together. On a on a on a on a appointed time, a sacred time, a set apart time, uh, and we are in holiness because He is holy. And it's not us ourselves, but it's the fact that we did what He said. And when we do what He says, uh, there's a ripple effect, right? There's a carryover. Um, with that being said, as always, peace and greeting to the twelve tribes of Israel scattered abroad. The same extension is for those who have committed themselves to Mashiach, to this ancient Hebraic faith, as Paul would say, walking in the way, the way of the law and the prophets and all things believed of our forefathers. Uh, Shaul also says to the Yahudim first, then to the nations. Uh, this word is, is so powerful, it's so magnetic, it's for those who are <clears throat> stuck in the deepest, darkest pits, the deepest, darkest valleys, the just un unbelievable situations, and this word, this gospel can pull you out. So for those who want a way out, there is a way out, and it's the power of the word. By his spirit, uh, there is a way out. But with that greeting and salutations to all, uh, we just thank you for joining us today, those who are here in the building and those who might watch this. Uh, on YouTube or whatever social media platform. Uh, but today, on this special day, uh, the shepherd's call, and the day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. The shepherd's call, the day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Turn to Genesis 1, please. Sorry. Sorry. Genesis 1. That's where we'll start at. Because as, as we are entering, um, as time is ticking, right? Time is ticking. And uh, I would I find it hard to, to that we would find people who would not believe that we're in the end days. So if we're in the end days. And as we've been talking about that uh, Yah has scattered sheep, he's scattered his sheep everywhere. And then we talked about yesterday about the sheep being in the field and that there must be a separation from sheep and goats or sheep and wild beasts. And th there must be the wheat and there's got to be a separation. Um, so we have to find ourselves returning back to this covenant. We have to find ourselves uh, being more cognizant of, this, of the festivals of the seasons of the weekly weekly Sabbaths because the world will not be doing that. And this is a distinction marker. It won't be that, hey, that brother, you know, Jeremy, he's a nice guy. Nice guy is not fit for the kingdom. Come on. Obedient. Sacrificing. I will not commit to A, B, and C. It interferes with the time of Yah. All right, so we have to so we have to find ourselves and find others getting more into the festival and the feast and the things of Yah uh, so that we can be separated, that it won't be so-and-so's a nice guy. A okay, nice guy's not going to cut it. But in Genesis 1, we'll be in verse uh, 14. It reads, <clears throat> And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. 
and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. As we talked about last night about uh, uh, separation, about that Hebrew word was badal, to divide, to separate, make a distinction. So Yah makes a distinction between light or between uh, 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 light and darkness, uh, there's a there's a light to rule the day, the sun. There's a light to rule the night, the moon. So he put these in the heaven, but these are also for signs and seasons. So yes. Yah says um, that we are to uh, recognize these things because they are of they are His, and it's a sign from this omnipotent, powerful uh, source of everything to. The people who are like ants compared to him. So it's, it's, so it's I have a way to connect with you, and you got a way to connect with me. Right? We understand that as hey, I got a telephone. We say stuff all the time. You know, hey, all you got to do is call me, right? And then sometimes the response is, well, you got a phone too. You can call me, right? So so this is so Yah has made a way, and it's called Moedim. So in this in Hebrew, we have it out here for you. <clears throat> it is the Vayomer Elohim Yehi. Mo'odot, I'm sorry, Mo'od, Mo'odot, Bir, Kia, Hashemayim, Lahavdil, Ben, Hayom, Uven, Halila, Vahau, Vahau, La, La Otot, Ul Mo'adim, Ul Mo'adim, Uli Yamim. Bashani. So the word is highlighted is seasons. Okay, it's seasons. So when we look at it, Moed is season. Season. But it's more than just a season. It's really, it's, it's meaning is it means it's a meeting. It's a meeting. Okay? An appointment. Right? We have appointments. We have doctor's appointments. We got business appointments. We got uh, personal appointments. We have appointments. So the Moed is a meeting, it's an appointment, it's also an appointed time, mm -hmm. which makes these even more important. And last but not least, the most important, sacred season. Sacred season. Right, so it's one thing for it to become fall, the, the, what we call fall or autumn, but it's another thing when it's time for Sukkot. Mm -hmm. Right, a time within a time. So there are seasons where it's just, it's summertime, you know, or it's springtime, but there'll be a time within a time. So we have the Moed. So this is a Moed. It's a sacred season and appointed time. <coughs> the signs in the heaven are for mankind. We talk about the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night. Okay. All right, let's get to Exodus, the 19th chapter. Exodus, the 19th chapter. <coughs> and we will start... In verse 10. We'll start in verse 10. Exodus 10. I'm sorry, 19 and verse 10. Time is flying by. Is it not? I mean, time is going by so fast. Mm -hmm. Like we just started. Now all of a sudden it's wrapping it up. But Isaiah, I'm sorry, Exodus. Thank you so much. Uh, Exodus 19 and 10, in the text, it reads, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them, today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. And be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Amen. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it, Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. Mm -hmm. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be a beast or a man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. Mm -hmm. So that was Exodus 19, 10 and 3. Mm -hmm. And Yah had a, a plan. Uh, he had a he had an appointment. He wanted to meet with the people. Right, as in, we're going to have a more formal introduction. Yeah. The way I came to you, uh, you were in a bad strait. 
if it was left up to you, you probably wouldn't want to leave. Mm -hmm. Right? We and, and we kind of get this in the text as they are leaving and, and after Pharaoh's destroyed, we, we kind of see them always going back to Egypt, always want to go back. All, you know, so it, so so Yah had to he had to impress himself. He had to, you know, got some sisters in here. You know, sometimes y'all don't like to be approached when a man is too pushy. Mm -hmm. Too, 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 too pushy. You know, I ain't even get to say, you know, my name. He done shook my hand and, and, and took and shook my hand and opened the door and then talking about we're going to have a date. And he said, whoa, whoa, you, you, you're going too fast. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all came in on them so strong and so powerful that it just it knocked them off their heels. Mm -hmm. Because the first place, everybody felt it. Mm -hmm. Everybody had to know who is the power of everything you see and don't see. Mm -hmm. he, he, he said, allow me to introduce myself. Right. My name is Yah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, said, let, he said, let me introduce myself. Mm -hmm. So now it's a more formal meeting between Yah, this power, and the people he went and redeemed. Okay. This is more formal now. Now he can't help himself. So he's like, hey, Moses, they need to be sanctified. Mm -hmm. they, need to be, they need to be set apart. They need to wash themselves, wash their clothes. They need to be as clean as possible. Oh, and by the way, that mountain that I'm going to be on, don't touch it. Mm -hmm. Moses, remember when we, were, when, when, I, when we had our conversation, uh -huh. and I was at Burning Bush, and it was all smooth and you know and I said hey before this conversation get to flowing take your shoes off mm -hmm. you're on holy ground mm -hmm. so now when I approach this whole mountain will be now be holy mm -hmm. so make sure that the people that have animals and livestock don't let your bull get too close to that mountain now mm -hmm. the bull got to die too so if anything that is uh, uh, made of the field if anything is made of the ground from the dust of this earth Person, animal, touch this, you got to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this was the instructions given. Uh, so Yah had made a plan to meet with the people. We're going to, now obviously Moses went and he turned, he told them that. And obviously Moses added what I would call a little kukma. kukma. He, he added a statue to it. Mm -hmm. He said, matter of fact, don't even touch a winner. Mm -hmm. Because he, he know them. He's like, man, these folks, they so crazy. Don't even, don't even touch a wife. So everybody get prepared. Moses sends him the word. Uh, let's go to verse same chapter, verse 16. So now we're on the day, and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount. So Yah can't help himself. Anybody can't help himself. As he's approaching them, it's thundering, lightning. And it's, it's morning time, but now it's dark. It's morning, but now it's dark. So when he says things in Isaiah, man, I inhabit in the darkness. Mm -hmm. Darkness don't bother him, though. Mm -hmm. we, we, we don't want to scare the other boogeyman. Mm -hmm. Things are bumping tonight. But that, that's, that's a, that, those are things how uh, lies and things where we just, you know, but anyway, the monster on the bread, bread and all that junk. But Yah, he, 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 he approaches this mountain and it becomes dark. There's thunder, it's lightning, and the voice of the trumpet exceeded so loud. So it was something that they might have never even heard before like that. Because it's from heaven. Mm -hmm. It was so loud. And all the people, everybody was shaking. It's like, uh, why are we here again? Are we about to die right now? They actually make that statement. Mm -hmm. Verse 17, And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. Okay. Verse 18, <clears throat> And Mount Sinai was all together on, on a smoke. Because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. So now as Yah is touching down, right? So we see him coming, it's thundering, and it's dark, and it's clouds, and it's lightning, and then when he, boom, he, he, he gets on the mountain, and now the mountain's on fire. There's smoke everywhere, and I'm in the middle of an earthquake. And the voice of, of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder. I'm talking about some being in, in a chaotic moment. I'm supposed to meet who again? Why am I here? There's an earthquake, there's thundering, it's lightning, it's fire, it's smoke. Oh, and by the way, don't touch that, you're dead. 
because they're at the bottom of the mountain. <clears throat> uh, so when were they supposed to go up? Y'all gave them instruction that when the trumpets sound long, mm -hmm. y'all come on up. So put yourself in their put put yourself in their situation. You've been drug out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. You've been in the wilderness. There's been all kinds of stuff going on. You fought Amalek a couple weeks ago. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff been going on. And now all of a sudden, this power mm. is upon you. And this power said, come on up. Mm. It's thundering. It's lightning. It was morning. Now it's dark. It's an earthquake. It's fire. It's smoke. And I can't touch the mountain where I'm dead. <laughs> would, would, you, would you go up? Mm. Right, see, see, see how, how we got to make that thing real? Like, would you go up? We, we read this stuff. Oh, man, I ran and just pushed them out. No, you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. No, you wouldn't. Not saying, not saying that thing. Because number one, there's an earthquake going on. So, anyway. So, verse 20. And the Lord came down upon the Mount Sinai, the top of the mount. The Lord caused Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord, to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, for lest the Lord break forth upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to the Mount Sinai, for thou charged us, saying, Set bounds about the mount, and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up, unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. So Moses went down unto the people, and he spake unto them. So when we when we when we look at this, we kind of we have to come to a conclusion. Right? That, that the people aren't ready. We have to come to a simple conclusion that the people are not ready. Right. right? He couldn't call them up. He just so he just okay Moses come on up then. Mm -hmm. Right? So we have a we have a repeat he said, hey, you know, remind them. He was like, hey, you know, they're not moving. They, 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 they're, they're, they're stuck in the mud. Right? So we have, so we have this appointment, this Moedim, a sacred season, a, a day, a time, and the people aren't what? Ready. Mm -hmm. So what it just really what it we just gotta keep it simple. Is it simple, stupid? Just keep it simple, stupid. The people aren't ready. Okay? We have two perspectives, two uh, Two perspectives going on into go, going into this Shavuot. Mm -hmm. This this particular one, okay. This this and it's not the first one. It's the first one as uh, now. Man, I don't want to get off on that. So we have uh, two perspectives. We have Israel and the mixed multitude, right? We got to remember it's Israel and the mixed multitude. They have their perspective, right? What's one thing about love? You got to walk somebody else's shoes, mm -hmm. okay? Perspective one, I ain't. My home, man. I don't have my home no more. My, all my stuff, all my belongings. I just had, to, we just, we just had, to, we had to go in haste. Remember, pass up, pass up. Had to go in haste. The way I used to live, things. I mean, yeah, I was in slavery, but man, I don't know. Slavery looked kind of good. Look at this mountain. Uncomfortable. I don't feel secure. Because they kept talking about no water, no food, no water, no food. So not secure. So that's a that's a perspective. All right? We're talking about a relationship here. You know, and in and, and marriages and things like that. You know, and I, I've learned this and I've shared this with young men and men, that if the wife does not feel secure, there will be issues. If she does not feel secure. Stability is everything for women. Am, am, am I wrong, ladies? I I'm, 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 I'm mean, security, stability, you know, all those things matter. And this is Israel as a woman. This bride. You know, saying, hey, I'm out here in this desert. It's hot. No water. No food. You know, it's Amalek come up out of nowhere. We're fighting all day. We have Yah's perspective. Yah said, I will be your cover. He said, I will be your provider. So you don't have to worry about your stuff. You don't have to worry about your home. You don't have to worry about all that stuff. The way I used to live. Follow me in a way. Follow me in a new way of living. 
Mm. Uncomfortable and no stability. He said, I will be, I want to be your God. Mm. I want to be your God. So we have two, two perspectives going on here uh, at this uh, uh, mountain. Okay, quick recap on how they got here, really quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, John 15 and 1, we talked about this, about the vineyard in Isaiah last night, right? That in John 15 and 1, we have, uh, I am the true vine and my father is the husband, mm -hmm. right? And we remember in Isaiah last night that that vineyard belonged to him. That vineyard would also Israel, okay? And when Israel didn't act right, I'm going to take up the hedge and let the wild boars gore it and eat it and stomp on it and go boo-boo on it, okay? All right. Uh, Psalms 107, 35 and 38. He, now the he is referring to, they're talking about the Almighty Yah. He turneth the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into water springs. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell that they may prepare a city for habitation and sow the fields and plant vineyards which may yield fruits of increase. He blesses them also so that they are multiplied greatly and suffereth not their cattle to decrease. So he is the husband in John 15 and 1, but in Psalms 107, Yah also sows. He plants. He plants things. He sows things. And um, when you plant and you sow something, you want to get a harvest. I want to get something out of it. Okay? So in verse 19, uh, ex Exodus 19 and 4, he has seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. So that was his harvest. He sold them in Egypt. Alright, remember how remember how they how all that happened, how they got there? You had twelve sons, Jacob's sons, and that youngest boy, they couldn't stand that baby boy. That baby that, that was daddy's favorite little boy. They couldn't stand him. They said, man, we're gonna kill him. No, 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 man, we can't do that, bro. We can't kill him. Just sell him. He ends up in Egypt. Long story short, he becomes the viceroy or second in command in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But there was a famine at the same time. I wonder who caused that famine. I wonder who made sure that no crops would grow in, in that area, in that region. And then, Joseph had the intelligence, the wisdom, and enough Yah in him to say, Hey, Yah, he, he, will, he will give you a dream. He'll give you the interpretation of a dream. So we have Joseph being established. We have the other boys trying to go find food. And the only way to get food was in Egypt. To make a long story short, the whole family is now placed in Egypt or they were sold in a field. They got sold in a field. He sold that seed there. And you had generations pass. Joseph then got his great, great, grandkids and stuff. And he had a political change, a new pharaoh and all this stuff. And now, Yah sends Moses and says, hey, I want my people up out of there. Mm -hmm. That was his harvest. Because you know, you only reap where you what? Sow. sow. Amen. You only reap where you sow. Mm -hmm. And then what he told that man? Right? So if I ain't, if I ain't, if I ain't straw no seed there, I'm not reaping there. Mm -hmm. But if I put seed there, I'm coming to get my harvest. Mm -hmm. So he harvests them and then. He brought them to Himself. That he brought them to Himself. So that's how we got here to where we are now. So, um, Exodus 19, 17. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet God. Mm. And they stood at the nether part of the mount, the bottom part of the mount. Mm -hmm. When we go over some last night about that, being at the bottom, let's turn to Proverbs. Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25. Say, ain't nothing like Yah. Ain't nothing like the Spirit. The Spirit will take you and, and, and guide you through this Word. And it's good. It's whole. It's good. Amen. So the children of Israel were at the nether part of the mount. Now in Proverbs 25. Let's look at Proverbs 25 and 5. <clears throat> take away the wicked from before the king and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. For it is better 
that it is set, for better it is that it be sent unto thee, come up hither. For better it is that it be said, come up hither. Mm -hmm. Come up hither. Okay. Where were they at again? At the bottom of the mountain. Where was Jah at? at the top of the mountain. And he said, come up. Yeah. So we have a king named Solomon. Mm. And he said, you know what? It's a good thing if the king tell you to come up. Mm -hmm. And Moses brought them to the bottom of the mountain. We have the king on top of the mountain saying, come on up. Mm -hmm. You won't believe this. They said, you go for me. Mm. I don't want to go. Mm. I'm too scared. For it is better... For better it is that it be said unto thee, come up hither, mm -hmm. that then sh ah, King James, then that thou <laughs> shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. So he said, come on up. They were at the bottom for a reason. Now, but what did Yah say? Yah said, I flew you here on eagle wings. Mm -hmm. So he had he had an elevator for him mm -hmm. to get him up to the top. But they, they said, nah, Moses, you be my bell hop. Be my bell hop, Moses. Preparation leads to elevation in Yah. Okay. Preparation leads to elevation in Yah. Right. So we've established that the people were not ready. Right. And this is an example for us to follow about how we prepare. Okay. So we we'll talked about this last week. Um, in topic two and one in the Apocrypha. Now when I was come home again, mm -hmm. and my wife Anna was restored unto me, with my son Tobias, in the feast of Pentecost, that, this day, mm -hmm. which is the holy feast of the seven weeks, which is the holy feast of the seven weeks, which is the holy feast of the seven, so a preparation time to this day. Amen. A holy time, a sacred time. Right, we have feast of unleavened bread, we have feast of Sukkot, and the first day and the seventh day or the first day and the eighth day are high days or convocations. Nobody work. But does that demean the other days in between? Does that make them less days? No. Right? Unleavened bread, Sukkot, there are some days that are specifically do not work. But does that demean the other days? Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't, then we have a seven-week feast here going into a highly, highly high Holy convocation. Mm -hmm. You don't work. Say, so count these seven weeks off. So preparation leads to elevation mm -hmm. in Yah. So next time, Yah willing, we will address these seven weeks a little bit more personable. Because when it's all said and done, you got to have a relationship with Yahoo. Mm -hmm. You got to. Because Yeshua ain't letting you through. Amen. He about his father's business. So we about the father's business. We got some. We got some in common. Right? Ain't nothing like when you meet somebody you don't know, but the conversation jump off because you got something in common. You got something you can talk about. And then the relationship kind of builds off from there. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Let's turn to Exodus 23. Exodus 23. Exodus 23, being verse 14. Hallelujah, when you get there. Exodus 23 and 14. 20, 23 and 14. Exodus 23 and 14. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee, in the time appointed of the month I be, for in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. And the feast of harvest, which uh, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, which thou hast gathered in the labors out of the field. Three times in a year all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. So the feast of the harvest, verse 16, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field. Okay? So <clears throat> we see <clears throat> that this is what is commanded or instructed 
to Moses as he is now getting the instructions or the, the fullness of the Torah, the instructions, the things to do, the things not to do, the festivals, the Moedim, but we know that when they came to the mount, like this is how you are to address the Feast of the Harvest. But when they came to the mountain, we know they had nothing with them. Okay? We know they had, they had nothing with them. Now, let's turn to Genesis 6. Genesis 6. We're going to look at something here. <clears throat> Genesis 6 will be in verse 3. It's hallelujah when you get there. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Genesis 6 and 3. And Yahuwah said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. So we will always have an issue here with men or humanity and Yah. Because Yah is what? Spirit. And we are flesh. Mm -hmm. So there are things that Yah wants to do, but we, or the flesh, intervenes, gets in the way. Yeah. We're our own roadblock. I'm my own speed bump. I'm the reason why I ran out of gas. Mm -hmm. See, it makes it more personal when you, when you, because if you keep this dialogue, it's just you and him. Don't throw nobody else in there. I ain't gonna throw my mom in there. I ain't gonna throw anybody. I ain't gonna throw my Kelly in there. It ain't her fault. I just wanna keep it between me and him. And if it's between me and him, then I know on his part of this uh, covenant, he will hold up his and extra. But on my part, you know, I'm, I'm as, as loose as a goose. Now, after reading Genesis 6 and 3, let's now go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Being 2 Corinthians 3. <clears> 2 <throat> Corinthians 3. Being verse uh, 17. Second Corinthians 3 and 17 reads, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with an open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last night, we scratched the surface of Adam, the first Adam, and the second Adam. The first man, the second man. Adam, this son of God, and then Yahshua, a son of God. One brought death. Someone else brought life. One brought curse. Someone else brought hope. Mm -hmm. One brought fear. Someone else brings faith. Amen. Okay. So now we're seeing something where Yah said, I'm not, I, I can't deal with man because man is flesh. Mm -hmm. So now we see that this second Adam is heavenly, but more importantly, spiritual. Mm -hmm. So when we're told in verse 18 that we're going to be changed into something, we're going to be transformed into something, because we're trying to be with someone, but there's a roadblock. It's called the flesh. This old wretched body, as Paul said, this wretched body, this wretched man that I am, because of this flesh. So the whole point, we talk about Shavuot, and we do the wave offering. They would wave the bread, but the bread had leaven in it. It had yeast in it. Mm -hmm. It's a symbolic picture of something, yeah. or really someone. Yeah. So we have to go back to the first Shavuot, mm -hmm. when he brought them out. Yeah. And he said, come up. And they was like, mm -mm, I'm mm -hmm. scared. Yeah. He said, come. They said, no. Mm -hmm. They rejected it. Why? Because they're flesh. Mm. They're human. And he said, I'm not going to strive with flesh. Because mm. I'm spirit. So, whereas the enemy think he's playing chess, Yah's like, man, you're making this easy for me. Mm. I'm going to transform them into me. Mm. Come on. They're going to be just like me. Okay. 
They're going to be just like from glory to glory. Mm -hmm. Because we talked about the curses last night, right? What was one of man's curse? Dust you are, dust you shall go back. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Hard hearts, <clears throat> hard hearts keep us from having a great harvest. Okay? Hard hearts keep us from having a great harvest for Yah and receiving all that He has. Okay? It's like, you know, you know, when you're kids, you got that cool uncle. You know, you have a family reunion, you got that cool uncle. And why is uncle cool? One, he's funny, all right? But two, you always know that he's going to give you some money. The cool uncle, he's going to have something for you. Every time you see him, I know I'm going to get at least like $5. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm going to get a free haircut, I'm going to get $5, I'm going to get some change in my pocket. You know, I'm going to go give me some, you know, so, so... <coughs> So Yah has so much for us, and we keep him from giving to us. He has a lot more than what, than what he gives us. Right? So we have to realize that it's a hard heart. Okay? Hard heart. Oh, sorry. So we're going to look at a scenario here. Um, let's go ahead and turn to Exodus 32. We'll be in Exodus 32 and 1. If we really think about it, that was what we celebrate Shavuot Pentecost, the receiving of the law, receiving of the Torah, these instructions, this wisdom. But I wonder what would have happened if the whole nation would have went up the mountain. What would have happened? What was, what was held back that day? Something was held back that day because they didn't go up. Something was, held, something was held back that day. Something we can ask in the kingdom. Uh, Yahshua, if they would have went up, what would have happened? Something we might ask in the kingdom one day. But we're in, so we're going to turn to Exodus 32, we'll be in verse 1. We've got to understand that having a hard heart keeps us from having a great harvest for Yah and receiving all that He has. They were too scared to go up, right? They were too scared to go up, but they were brave when it came to setting up the golden calf. Let me say that again. They were too scared to go up the mountain, but they were extremely brave when it came to setting up the golden calf. Right. They were too scared to go up, but they weren't scared to Aaron, Aaron, get it, make us something. Mm -hmm. Come on, golden Good. calf, You're right. the bull. You're right, right. So we're at the bottom. We're at the bottom part of this mountain. Uh -huh. We don't want to go up. We got the golden calf set up, and we're also having a big orgy, right? Because they rose to play, mm -hmm. fornication. Because that's what bull. That's when you have a big bull. You want that big boy to do what? Make with all the mother heifers mm -hmm. to create some more studs, right? So, but this is something that they brought out of Egypt, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They brought it. They brought it with them. This is Israel and mixed. Remember, so there's a there there they, there are things in the back pocket I really ain't let go. I was supposed to let go in Egypt, but I really didn't. When I crossed through the waters, you're supposed to wash me clean, but and it did. Mm -hmm. It did. So they were too scared to go up. But brave when it came to sitting up the golden calf and having a big old party. Exodus 32 and 1. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mount, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we what not what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in your ears, uh, the wives and your sons of your daughters, and bring them into me. And all the people break off the golden ears which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, fashioned with a graving tool. After that he made a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat, to drink, and rose to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way. Right? They have turned aside quickly out of the way, which I commanded them that they have made a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So Yah is repeating to Moses what they're saying. Now Moses don't know this, but Yah know everything. He's repeating to them, Hey, go down there. This is what your, this is what your folks say. Uh -huh. 
And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, that, it may, that I may consume them, and that I will make of thee a great nation. Uh, and long story short, Moses said, whoa, 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 calm down, big fella. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't do that. Like, whoa. We don't want nobody talking about you. We don't want nobody saying, man, this powerful God, he brought you folks all the way out here to kill him. Like, like, calm down, big fella. Calm. Easy. Easy, easy, big fella. You know, you know, I'll go down there. Yes, sir. I will go down there. So, so we have this, we have this scenario. So this is something that we are to remember. Right? That we are supposed to hold true. And we're told this in 1 Corinthians 10. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10 really quick. <clears throat> Bless your heart. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 10 and 7. Neither be idolaters as were some of them as it is written. They sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. First commandment is have no other Elohim Amen. in my face. Mm -hmm. Right? The Panyin in my face. And then, don't have no idols. Mm -hmm. They're doing both of them down there and they ain't even, they ain't even got no instruction yet. They ain't got no instruction yet. They already, they already there. Okay. So how can they have a great? How can they have a great harvest? How can y'all get some out of them? Amen. How can? Like, like they didn't even want to go up. They were too scared to go up. But Buku brave when it came to we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get a jump. We're gonna find some drink. We're gonna find us some stuff to put in our system. We're gonna eat. We're gonna party. We're gonna have a good time. They ever do that? When that thunder and that lightning and that fire and that smoke and that earthquake, he said, come on up, I want to see you. Mm -hmm. I don't have nothing to do with that. Psalm 95. was more secure in a golden bull that didn't talk. More secure in a golden bull that don't move, that don't speak, that don't heal. More secure in that. Right, we got to find ourselves, we got to realize that the religious systems that we've been accustomed to, mm -hmm. the religious systems, the, these different things that they've been grained in our brain, like they don't heal, mm -hmm. they don't work. It's like mm -hmm. the golden calf. The Yah that we serve is power, he's fire, he's wind, he's water, he's everything. He's a healer, he's a restorer, he's a deliverer, he's, a, he's, he's everything. But we continually want to be in a system or be in something that really can't help me because it's comfortable. I can, I, it's okay because this bull is not going to demand my best. The golden calf will not demand your best. Mm. Idols do not demand your best. Okay. The adversary does not want you to be great. Gotcha. Why? Because you'll break his kingdom. Amen. That's it. I need you to be a dumb sheep in this wilderness. I don't need you to allow what Yah put in you to come out. I don't need that. I need you to be so much into your flesh that you just crush your, you, you just you just quench your own spirit. You just quench your own spirit. I need you to be completely in the flesh because now you're not a you're you're not a effect to me. So it's the people that you least expect that got so much in them to do for the king. <coughs> That's it. I'm up here, but I promise you, I guarantee it. There are people in this room that y'all put gallons upon gallons upon gallons of seed in you. I might be up here. But I promise that there are people in here, people watching, that will have gallons upon seeds in them. Yes, that Yah was like, I want you to do this. And we hold back. Mm -hmm. We hold back. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, the flesh leads the way. Because mm -hmm. what they say, make us a God that it will lead, it will go before us. We're supposed to be going and following after Him. That's why I said, hey, I'll send an angel before you. Don't cross him. Don't transgress him. My words in his mouth. He will not pardon your iniquity. Off topic, but whatever. It's all right. Amen. Psalm 95. Yeah. Psalm 95. Psalm 95. <clears throat> Verse 1. 
Psalm 95, verse 1. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto Him with psalms. For the Lord is our great God and a great King above all gods. Right? He, he showed He was a King at that mountain. Amen. And like Psalm, Proverbs 25, when the King said, Hey, come on up here. It's a good thing. Right? So if Yah telling you to come on up, don't harden your heart. Come on. When you hear His voice, don't harden your heart. Amen. He's saying, come on up. Don't be scared. Come on up. Amen. Verse 4. In His hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is His also. The sea is His, and He made it. In His hands form the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God. We are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Today, if you will hear His voice, Pardon not your heart, mm -hmm. as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, forty years long I was, was I grieved with this generation, and said it is a people that do err in their heart, mm -hmm. and they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Okay? So hard hearts keep us from having a great harvest for you. Okay? Uh, and receiving all that he has, he had a lot. He had a lot for them to get, but they didn't get it. He had so much for them, they didn't get it. Say, so you know what? You won't even make it. Your baby that you're so worried about, they'll get it. Hard hearts keep us from hearing. Hard hearts keep us from hearing. The harder your heart is, it's something that's hard to hear. Mm -hmm. All right? The harder your heart, the harder it is to hear. Let's turn to Acts seven fifty one. Acts 7. <clears throat> Verse 51. Mm. Acts 7 and 51. Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uncircumcised in heart and ears. You got hard heart, you got hard ears. Mm -hmm. Ye do always resist the Ruach HaKodesh mm -hmm. as your fathers did. So do ye. Mm. That's why we always repeat. Well, for it was written the four times written for our learning. That through the comfort and patience of the scriptures we might have. Oh. So we got to know that if we have hard hearts and hard ears to the spiritual things of God who told us in Genesis 6 and 3 that I will not strive with people because they're flesh and I'm spirit. Mm -hmm. So that's why Shaul, thousands of years later, he come and he say, hey, we're going to go from glory to glory where the, where, the, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's your liberty. Mm -hmm. So we got to be transformed to what he is and not the other way around. So what do we do? We revolve our life around the world and not the not our life around His Word. Mm. So we're not transforming. We're, we're, we are we are demutating ourselves into this world. He said, no, 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 no. no. I want you to be like me. Mm. In order to do that, the first step is make your life revolve around my Word. Shabbat, dietary laws, the fest, all these different things. So leaving work, taking days off, doing stuff early, whatever it is, Start to practice the rehearsal, the practices. There's nothing important that you do where there's no practice for it. Armies have military games. Why? Because they're about to go to war. There's no other reason to have a military game than I'm about to go to war. Because i got to be perfect on the field. Well, Yas, I want you to be perfect in this field. I want you to be perfect. you got to practice and rehearse. Said this the other day that if I'm trying to, if I'm looking forward to a jubilee in him, well then I gotta be able just to handle 50 days. How I'm gonna handle 50 years? How I'm gonna do how, how I'm gonna be how am I gonna be on if I can't be on point for seven sats and then to bring something to be prepared and ready on the 50th day, then how will I do seven years? Seven, seven sets of years of 49 years to get to a 50th year where he had something for me, but I ain't really prepared for it. I'm not really ready for it because I'm not, I don't really want it. I don't really want it. When we push comes to shove, I don't really want it. Right? What we're saying? Don't talk about it. Be about it. Man, don't talk about it. Be about it. And that's, just, that's just the bottom line. Uh, John 12. John 12.
John 12 and 23. All right, so hard, hard to keep us from hearing. Keep us from hearing. We got, to be, we got to be able to hear, especially this day. If there's ever time we need to be able to hear Almighty, this is, this is, this is the day. The next thing you know, you've been found, you've been found yourself uh, uh, married with somebody, and they ain't even they they are opposite sex. They done, they done had a, a transformation, and you you ain't even know. Them pictures be on Facebook like this, you know, like like what you was a, a man, you look like you. Like I couldn't be single today. I have been, been in jail. You you's not a you's not a woman. You was born something else, and it's okay. But once again, the adversary will use the laws, social media, internet, all this stuff. That's his going to be his battlefield. But your God, he come with plagues. He come with storms. He come with hell. He going to change the atmosphere. He going to have stuff flying outside of earth orbit. That's how your y'all going to fight. So we got to be a people that are found in Goshen. We got to be a people found in Goshen. That's all I can say. Got to be people found in Goshen. Uh, I tell y'all John 12. Yeah. John 12 and 23. And Yahshua answered them saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me where I am. There shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my Amen. soul troubled, Amen. and what shall I say? Father, save me from this Amen. hour. But for this cause came I into this hour. Amen. Father, glorify thy name. Then there came a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it, and will glorify it again. Amen. The people, therefore, that stood by heard it, said it, it thundered. Doom, doom. All they heard was thunder. Doom, doom, doom. And others said an angel spake to him. So some could hear and others couldn't. I guess, I, I, I guess I'd ask a question, well, where was their heart at? Come on. Uh-oh. Is that the only reason why they wouldn't have heard? Come on, baby. Because if your heart ain't circumcised, your ears is not circumcised. That's what Stephen uh -huh. said before they killed him. Yeah. Look at Acts 9 really quick. The truth should bring you problems. Mm hmm we're supposed to rejoice over. Amen. What he said. The truth should bring you problems. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to rejoice over. Hallelujah. Acts 9 Thank you for your truth. Mm -hmm. and 3. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around by him a light from heaven. And he fell on the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Yahshua, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Mm. The Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, it shall be told of thee what thou must do. Amen. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Mm. Can't see, came here. We gotta be able to hear this man. We gotta be able to see what y'all want us to see. Okay. Sheep and goats. Sheep and goats. Let's turn to Matthew 25. <clears throat> be in verse 31. Matthew 25, verse 31. Give me hallelujah when you, when you get there. Amen. 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 Matthew 25 and 31. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. And before Him shall be gathered all nations, I wonder if that all nations anybody left out. Mm. I wonder if that all mean all. Y'all think that all mean all? A-L-L? -L -L? Okay. Mm -hmm. And he shall separate. And he shall separate. Come on. Like that Hebrew word we talked about last night, but dog, mm -hmm. making a distinction. 
them one from another as a shepherd. As a shepherd. You know, I thought on Friday we talked about the people being the sheep scattered and that there was going to be a certain shepherd coming and looking for them. I thought we talked about that on Friday. As a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, which be the sheep, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So see, there was a moment in Mount Sinai where he said what? Come. Mm -hmm. They ain't come. Only one went. Moses. Told Moses to come up that second time. So now we're going to see where in the end, he's going to have all these people, all these sheep. He's going to say, come. He won't believe it. They're going to go. For as I was hungry, and you gave me meat, I was thirsty, and you gave me drink, I was a stranger, you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me, I was sick, you visited me, I was in prison, you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, and, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When we saw thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in a prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto him, Verily I say unto you, as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, mm -hmm. ye have done it unto me. That's why I always make the statement about you never know who Yah's dealing with, what Yah sees in them. So he says, when you do it to the least of my brethren, you've done it to me. Mm. <coughs> now we're told that he's going to come with his angels. Powerful, right? Really quick, 2 Thessalonians, first chapter, the angels will be coming with him. When all this is going on, once again, it's going to go back. They ain't, they ain't coming to ask for no sugar. They're not, they not knocking on your door. You want to borrow some sugar? 2 Thessalonians, first chapter. Second Thessalonians 1 and 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Yahshua shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. I think when we was talking uh, last night about the parable of the sower, and it he made a reference to the tares and wheat growing up. This is the end of the age. And what did he say? <coughs> he said that the angels were the what? The reapers. Mm -hmm. But they will come and they, they will harvest in this field. Okay, I want you to bear with me here. I've got something for y'all to see. So the angels will come and reap. So these fiery, flaming, powerful, military-minded, this vengeance of the Lord time, fire, weaponry going to come. Woof, woof, woof. Mm. We got that picture, right? Yes, sir. That's you in the field. Mm. And that's, look at look how that weed drop. That's how the man is going to be. Woof! Woof! Mm. Cutting it all down. Mm. That's what he got. I wonder what, 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 what the angel's going to have. What a tool. I wonder what the angel's going to have. Mm. When they come and separate. When they come and separate. They full, they fire, they, they made a straight fire. Okay. Mm. That stuff's tough. Mm. One swipe. And that's what the angels gonna do when they come. Because 